Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus and check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4 as well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? BANGLE getting here. Coming back at you with another video. This is the Ozark State Outlaws Season 2 Off Season. If you are new here, I would appreciate that follow button or subscribe on YouTube, obviously. Subscribe is what it's called. Uh, as we are only continuing to get better. You can fam uh, familiarize yourself with the rest of the series if you'd like via the playlist on the channel. Or you can pick up now because we will be going over the roster, the team, the players leaving, and there, a there are a lot of impact playmakers leaving. We just signed this new contract as we've gotten better every season so far. Of course, only one season of saying that. But we're going to aim for uh, not only a seven win season next year but a bowl appearance victory and even maybe a conference championship appearance unfortunately now we have to simulate and see what players will be leaving ozark state seniors no one will be going to the draft i can guarantee you that all right this is going to be the uh the tough time are there any coach changes within our organization at all that's the only thing i'm curious about um so the old coach of Louisiana Lafayette's gone. He left for a new job. A lot have been fired. The entire staff at ULM. Bunch of guys are gone here from Western Kentucky, or at least uh, their head coaches, I should say. But other than that, no changes. This is the sad part. This is the real sad part. Gerard Sharp was a senior, really? He didn't play that much. But um, as you can see, Karan Kirkpatrick is gone. Number one on the field and number one in your heart will have to be replaced. Lawrence Frederick starting right guard, gone. Lightning McQueen, gone. It's the end of an era. Tariq Parrish is gone. Had a great season this year. Starting center, Max Birch is gone. Byron Fulton, who made so many great plays, is gone. Simeon Petty. Mark Keith Ralph, who didn't play that much. Jarvis Blankenship is gone. Darren Maxwell. Robert Nixon didn't really matter. Lee Rankin was a backup. Ron Wilkerson, Dante Jean, backup. Jason Perry, Gerard Glover. Gabriel Timmons made some great plays for us. Quincy Russ made some great plays. Marcus Townsend, all leaving. With the bright side of Jason Perry, you guys get Karan, or excuse me, uh, Kend uh, Kendrick Cunningham in a backup position. He actually will probably see the field at some point with... Uh, Colby Spencer having glass everything. Let's see any transfer requests. Who wants to become an outlaw? Last year, last time it was crazy. We had a freshman center, Kevin Washington. Of course I will accept that. Last time it was crazy. We got Mike Lee out of Kansas, big hitting safety. We got Hunter Register, receiver out of Minnesota. Not to mention one of the best players in the entirety of college football, not at this time, but Devin White. And it's time for recruiting. We're going to need to have a big, big, big recruiting window here. We got a ball out. Get a lot of these players to sign. Yep, this is a big player. Omar Williams, five-star receiver. We're in a recruiting battle with two schools. We need him badly. All right, we, we have 10,000 points right now, and we're barely in the lead. Hold Ah, oh, this is such a nerve-wracking time because you can go in on a lot of the guys. And you could lose by 100, and you get nothing, and you waste all your points. I'm going to go into Coach Skill Trees here. I have an upgrade. Where can we put that in? It's going to be recruiting, obviously. Can I go up here and get something? Ooh, we can. Um, you gain 1,500 extra recruiting points for the offseason, and a 5% chance you will steal a prospect from the top school. That's going to be the one for right now, because we get 1,500 extra points. That's huge. You guys don't need me to tell you that. It's huge, gigantic, colossal. You guys didn't see, but we had another big signing, Mike Marshall, the beast. He, of course, is now an Ozark State outlaw. Good player, too. Excited to add him to the bunch. Um, and it's going to be interesting. I'm not so in on the Juco players as much as I am on the actual players coming right out of high school. We'll have to see. 
Let's go ahead and prioritize. So quarterback, Kirby Johnson, I think we're going to be able to get him. Halfback, I don't care. Fullback, nobody. Wide receiver, Omar Williams, we have to get. We have to. I'm going to put in 7,000 points, I think. Just right off the bat. At tackle, Andrew Burley will get some. And we, like, we'll be able to steal a lot of these guys, like, very easily. Mike McKenzie, Scott Hall at center, have already commit here. At defensive end, we have Chris Holmes. This is a really good defensive end class for us. I really want Albert Johnson. We're going to get Andy Curry for sure. I don't even feel like putting points in him. Really. But Albert Johnson and Kenneth Whitlock. Really, Albert Johnson's the best one. Because he has 89 finesse moves, 80 block shed. We need to get him. Absolutely. We're going to put in a lot of points here. Probably like 3,000. Maybe we'll move things around. Defensive tackle. I'm not really too fussed about any of these players. David Johnson. How good are you? He's okay. Not really a player I want to target too badly. Andre, Andre Malone. No way. At cornerback. Still, it's these Juco guys. And then at free safety, I want Dan Atkinson. He's a player that looks pretty good to me. So we are going to try to get him. I don't think 825 is going to be enough. Athlete, we're going to be able to get Tony Gates. Caleb Tate, we're not going to be able to get. He's going to be stolen by... Um... Dude, I don't, even know. I don't even know what school that is. What is that? I know someone who knows what that logo is, the C, above Notre Dame. I know someone who knows what that's going to be like, oh, you, you, don't know the, you don't know the logo? Come on. Hey, everybody knows it. Like, I, I've, I don't think I've ever seen that before in my life. What is that? Like, the first thing I thought about when I saw it was the, uh, was the Calgary Flames. What is that? Wow, it's Central Michigan's logo? That's wild. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I don't, I guess I've never remembered seeing that. I've watched Central Michigan play. What was I? Closed my eyes when they were on the field? So I, I guess I wouldn't be watching them play. I don't know. I guess I didn't, uh, I put two and two together on that one. The reason I don't care so much about this player is because he is a running back, probably. Although he could be a safety. That'd be a lot of good speed at safety. I don't know. He's a, he's a running back, wide receiver, or safety. We have a running back. This might be a starting safety. Oh, we might need that. Is 7,000 points too many? I feel like it isn't. I feel like we need to lock that one up for sure. And we're going to lose Dan Atkinson probably. He's good too, which sucks. I don't know, man. We're in a, we're in a tough spot. We're going to lose a lot of these players. So basically where we are right now is I'm going all in on one player, hoping that the other teams uh, don't pass me. I'm going to take away 500 here. Imagine that's the death of me. Imagine. That'd be a lot of fun. I would hate that. Um, we're going to put him into Caleb Tate. That's not going to be enough. There's no point. Oh, I hate this. I have no idea what to do. We're just going to have to hope. We're going to have to hope. Oh, this could be so bad. So, we did sign the top class in the conference. Although, to say things didn't exactly go to plan uh, really sums this up. I think we got Caleb Tate. I don't know why it's kind of glitching out. But Omar Williams... We barely signed. That was really close over Ole Miss. Kirby Johnson, who I thought we were going to get. Nebraska went all out. A lot of teams did. I mean, he's a five-star quarterback. It's just... It's a shame. It, we didn't really have a huge fit on our roster right now. Tony Gates, athlete. We got pretty easily here. I don't remember how many points I put into these guys. We didn't get Andy Curry, which would have been cool. Missed out on Andrew Burley, which kind of sucks because he's a really good tackle. Didn't get Andrew Cummings. Missed out on him by 225 points, although I'm not really that fussed about that. Missed out on Kenneth Whitlock, Leon Maddox, Darren Brady, Charles Pettit we just missed out on. Missed Jeremy Carey, Roy Maynard, Dustin Houston, David Johnson we missed. 
Uh, Jeff Cantrell goes to Southern Miss, but we did get Chris Chase. I don't know how. Very, very barely. 50 points. He's a Juco corner. But he's a 78 overall, which is really high. Andre Malone went to Texas State, so we'll play him a few times uh, over the course of his career. We got Albert Johnson by a lot. I guess Wisconsin really didn't go all, all in on him. So really excited to add him. Missed out on Dan Atkinson, but that's all right. We got Derek Smith and, of course, Chris Holmes, Mike Marshall, Mike McKenzie, Tim Franklin, and Scott Hall. A lot of these guys signed earlier. But overall, pretty good class for us. Well, obviously, it was the best in the conference. But uh, things, of course, never go quite to plan. I'm going to do a better job recruiting. I know you say best class in the conference, but I'm going to do a better job recruiting next year. I think that much goes without saying. I absolutely will. But we're on to position changes. And it's going to be so nice to see players like Devin White playing this year. So Kendrick Cunningham is now a senior. Chris Porter's off red shirt. So a lot of people wanted me to move Kendrick Cunningham to wide receiver. It's kind of a crowded position. And Kendrick Cunningham, like... I guess he's a 72 overall receiver. 75 overall halfback. Doesn't play defense too well. Hold on. What do we have at running back? Oh my goodness. Kendrick Cunningham is going to be the backup running back. T interesting. Very interesting. Who would have guessed that that's what would end up happening to him? He'll be a really good receiving back, to be fair. Maybe we'll try a halfback pass or two. This is a very fun development. I know everyone loves Kedrick Cunningham. I thought he was off the team because I didn't see him on the depth chart. But yeah, he is back and he will be getting some touches this year. Fall back. I mean, Michael Harrison is terrible. Does anyone fit better? Tim O'Brien, could you play fullback? Yes, you will. You play fullback now. Over terrible 45 overall Michael Harrison. He's a receiving style, all right? Can you catch? Uh, no, not even at all. Yeah, receiving style. Okay, well, how, what's your catching rating? 41 spectacular catch. I have 50 catching flat. But my catch in traffic is 62. And my route running is a 50. I'm a receiving style player. That's terrible. Receiving core is actually nice as hell now. Hunter Register, the Minnesota transfer, now starts. Only 82 speed, which sucks. Omar Williams is going to be a gigantic addition to the team as a freshman. Of course, we have Roland Francisco and Rob Gaither. It's a young receiving core. And Rob Gaither, I guess, is number four now. Damn. I mean, he was such an impact player. I might... Even though he's worse than Roland Francisco, I think what I'm going to have to do, depending on how upgrades go, is put Rob Gaither higher on the depth chart. Look at that 77 catching traffic. I mean, it's good. He's a really good player. He's going to be still wide receiver three. I think Roland Francisco is going to be moved down. At tight end, we have one tight end. It's Jake Rodriguez. Didn't do a great job recruiting, but can any of you play tight end? Maybe the 5'11", 178 guy, probably not. Ryan Muller. I mean, he is 212 pounds. Question is, can he block it all? I don't even know that it would matter too much. 59 isn't terrible, I guess. I know that sounds like it's terrible. What is yours, though? Damn, Jake Rodriguez is actually an insane blocker. But uh, our backup tight end now is going to be Ryan Muller. He's a senior. He's pretty big. He's only 60 overall there. But we know he's a good receiver. So that, that's what's going to happen there. Left tackle. Our offensive line is going to get a lot better. But we could boost some of these players around, and I think we probably will. Kevin Washington's a transfer. Mike McKenzie might have to step in and start right away. I don't love that. The offensive line's actually going to be pretty good this year. It's going to be as good as it's ever been. Or I should say better than it's ever been. We're going to move a tackle over. Who is the fastest? Jack Ham's actually a really good blocker. I want to check out that, uh, that out. But who is the fastest? Howard. Who... I feel like Howard would probably be the best as a guard or a center. Probably center. We could honestly play anybody at center. Hold on. 64 speed. Let's move. Let's move Jack Ham to center. So he will start there. Of course, 
Ken Kevin Washington as a transfer can't play right away. But he'll be really good next year. At left end, we have a crowded group now. But it's a really, really, really good group. Deontay McKeon probably going to move to linebacker. I think he played a lot of linebacker last year anyway. Not a very good linebacker. That's upsetting. I think Chris Holmes, who's a freshman this year, is going to play and probably play a lot. But it's not going to be... Jeez, he's really good. We got a, we got a sick player here. Chris Holmes is going to play defensive tackle. He's like two, only 249? Oh, I don't know about that. Hold on. I mean, Albert Johnson is 6'1", 286. This is the guy that we tried so hard to get. He has insane acceleration. 90? He is strong. He has 89 finesse move. Would it be insane to try him at defensive tackle? I know we have a good one right now. But Daryl Bradford played a lot last year despite being defensive tackle number two. 87 pursuit. I want to move him to defensive tackle. I think he'd be a really, really good defensive tackle. Now, he's not going to play over uh, Daryl Bradford. Daryl Bradford's a starter. He's going to get better. But Albert Johnson is insane. 77 strength. Low agility, but insane acceleration. Super low awareness. 29? What in the ass? 71 tackle, 70 hit power. 75 power move, 89 finesse move, 80 block shed, 87 pursuit. He even covers fairly well. I think eventually he's going to start at defensive end. But for the first year, I think he's going to play defensive tackle. And and probably, I don't know, do I want to redshirt him? I don't think so. I might redshirt Chris Holmes. Do we? I don't know. I, is it finally Deontay McKeon's time? He's very fast. He's strong. He's, he's not as good as Chris Holmes is. It'll be a game timer. We'll see what happens when we get to red shirting. Sandoval Slaughter will continue to play right end. Defensive tackle. It's a great position for us now with Albert Johnson sliding inside. That's what uh that's what she said, maybe. We have another McKeon. So maybe it wasn't Deontay McKeon playing linebacker. Maybe it was Clinton. I didn't even realize that. Devin White is gonna be a beast at middle linebacker. Jeff Fisher probably should move over. Yeah, he absolutely will. I can't have Nick Olsen, Tommy Williams, and what, LaRue Schaefer? Yep, LaRue Schaefer. <laughs> uh, so Jeff Fisher's going to move over and play left outside linebacker. Right outside linebacker over in the middle. Who's fast? Tommy Williams? You play middle linebacker now. And Jeff Fisher plays left outside linebacker. I mean, like, how often do we see Edwin Garrett get in the game at middle linebacker? Never. And I want Jeff Fisher on the field because he's good. So, he will play right outside linebacker. My bad. Cornerback's a really good position for us. This Chris Chase player is kind of an insane addition. Mike Marshall as well. I might redshirt him. I think we probably will. He's a really good player, and I want to use him year one. But I think it makes the most sense to redshirt him and then stick with Chris Outlaw, Derek Higgins, and Chris Chase as our core three. At free safety... We have Randall Barron, who's not good. That's why I tried to assign safeties. Mike Lee's going to be great for us at strong safety. Really fast at 91 speed. Or should be at strong safety. 91 speed. Should have fantastic hit power. Only 62. Roll the tape on him at Kansas. He's kind of sick. Great coverage. Great coverage. Do we move Harmon over to free safety? I think we might have to. Mm, no. We could move a cornerback over. Does anyone profile well? 70 hit power on Devin Robeson. Not terrible block shed. Good pursuit. Great zone coverage. Yeah, you play free safety now. 76 overall. That is a fine. Got a good kicker. Got a A puncher. And we have two athletes. Where do these guys fit? Josh Shelton's a gem. Tony Gates probably could play anything. Except for the defense side of the ball. 77 overall wide receiver. 76 halfback. 78 quarterback. 80 throw power. 84 throw accuracy. 
I mean, he's a true freshman. So we'll probably just redshirt him. We'll decide later. Or can we keep him an athlete and have him play both sides of the ball? Might be able to do that. What is what is Shelton, though? 72 halfback, 72 wide receiver, that said. He's a defender, probably. Oh, no? He's just a random, like, decent player. He's a running back, maybe? Yeah, I guess he'll be a backup running back. And then Tony Gates, can we leave him at athlete? I'm pretty sure we can. I don't remember ever doing that in NCAA, though. So, I have no clue. The most exciting time of the offseason, my favorite training results. Who's sick now? Devin White, 87 overall. Let's go position by position. As uh, Colby Spencer's up to an 84 now as a junior. 91 speed, that goes up a little bit. I hope he got a lot better as a passer. That's what I'm hoping for. His, his break tackle is still so low. I wish that was a lot higher. Elusiveness is still so low. Spin move, low. Carrying is up to an 87, 80 catching. He would have made a sick receiver. 91 throw power, 82 throw accuracy. That's why we play him at quarterback. That's why we play him at quarterback. He's 70 tackling. 87 man, 85 zone. He's a disgustingly good player at everything, but he makes the most sense at QB. Pedro Goddard's a good backup. And then, um, where is Strong? Here we go. And then Chris Porter's even getting better. He was a five-star that wasn't that good, but now he is pretty good, even as a, uh, as a redshirt freshman now. So like that halfback, Scott Lewis, 96 speed. Kedrick Cunningham goes up six. He's an 81 overall running back. He won't start, but he'll probably get a lot of touches. Wow, he's really, really good. He's not as... Scott Lewis is insanely good. High carrying, high catching. Kendrick Cunningham, high key beast. Michael Harrison still sucks. Hunter Register goes up. Speed doesn't get touched. Roland Francisco goes up to a 78. Ooh, that makes it tougher for Rob Gaither. Especially with him being younger. Kind of. I know they're the same technical year. Rob Gaither's going to have another year of eligibility, though, because we redshirt him. But I... Rob Gaither is just better. He is just a better player than Roland Francisco. Francisco's going to be return man. Rob Gaither is going to be wide receiver three still. Even though the overalls have changed, my plans have not. Offensive line getting a lot better. I love it. Oh my god, look at the boosts. We're gonna be good. <laughs> We're actually gonna be good. I like that so much. Uh, seeing the offensive line great just warms my heart. Deontay McKeon, who doesn't play, or hasn't, he's getting to be pretty good. Up to a 77 overall. Block shit could be higher, but Shelton Neal's got great block shed, especially for redshirt freshmen. Shelton Neal's very good. Can't wait till he starts. Right end, Sandoval Slaughter, 85 speed he goes up to. What else? 88 hit power? Only 70 power move, but 85 finesse move, 76 block shed, 81 pursuit. Good numbers on him for sure. Defensive tackle, Daryl Bradford goes up to a 77. 70 speed. Tell me you're a beast defensively now. 83 power move, 79 finesse move, 74 black shot. I wish was a bit higher. 81 hit power. Yeah, Daryl Bradford's still a beast, only getting better. Colt 45, now a junior. Goes up to a 76 overall. Speed's getting better. Devin White, disgusting. 87 overall, 91 speed. Insane agility acceleration as well. Even juke moves pretty high. 79 jumping. 79 tackle, but 82 hit power. 79 power move. 93 finesse move? What the H? <laughs> the hell, dude? Decent block shed. Great pursuit. Great coverage. He has 93 finesse move. Middle linebacker blitzes a lot this year. Jeff Fisher is up to a 79 overall. He's near an 80. The Outlaw, all the way up to a 78 in his senior season. Including 93 speed. Derek Higgins as a sophomore looks disgusting at a 77 overall. I mean that in the best possible way. Disgusting, I should say. Um, and his uh, 
coverages are great 89 man 85 zone outlaw 88 zone even freddie stovall as a junior has some pretty good stats and then free safety devin robeson's up to an 81 overall 84 speeds okay i guess and then his coverage is 88 zone is great strong safety mike lee's up to an 82 92 speed he should have way hit uh, way more hit power way more it's only a 65 and that went up Ernest Harm is a player that will play. We always play our backup safeties. 88 man, 85 zone though. Pete Riley up to an 82. Punter's getting better. Hopefully the kick power went up a ton. 72, because we just had nothing from him. And 84 now for Pete Riley. This was fun. I like this a lot. I love training. Of course, it's always a sad time when we have to cut players. In this case, we don't. I might anyway. Michael Harrison. I feel like it's almost a meme to keep him on the team now. We'll uh, we'll keep him on the squad. Custom conferences, we're not going to be moving. Should we add a team into the Sun Belt? Ooh, I think we could. I don't think we're going to, though. I think we're going to keep the Sun Belt as is. It's time to redshirt players. Who do we redshirt? That is the question. We're going to redshirt Josh Shelton, running back. Tony Gates. Do we redshirt Tony Gates? I think we're going to. He was an athlete that I guess plays a wide receiver now. Because I, I didn't move his position. It auto had him at receiver. We're going to redshirt him. I like that decision. We'll have a, a beast in Omar Williams. We have a good receiving core. Might be wise to redshirt both of our centers here. Just our entire offensive line to keep another year of eligibility. If we can. Like, who wants to get redshirt their senior year? But Kingsley Duckett is going to get redshirt. Um, Chris Holmes, I said it was kind of a game timer. We have Deontay McKeon. He's a junior. He's going to be a senior next year. I think it'd be the right move to redshirt Chris Holmes. He's a very good player. Like, he's really, really good. So I'm going to want another year of eligibility. I'm going to play it selfish, and I am going to redshirt him. Definitely going to keep Albert Johnson in there. Uh, we'll keep that the way it is. Linebacker's not going to change. Probably at all. Nick Olsen. I mean, hold on. We're going to have a lot of players leaving. I am going to redshirt Nick Olsen. At cornerback, Mike Marshall. He's got to be a redshirt. Got to be redshirt. 100%. At free safety, nothing. Strong safety, nothing. Kicker, punter, nothing. This will be the starting lineup. Colby Spencer, the junior at quarterback. Scott Lewis and Kedrick Cunningham splitting carries. Both seniors at running back. Fullback is going to be Tim O'Brien. Wide receiver, we're going to have Hunter Register. Omar Williams at number two. Rob Gaither at number three. And then Roland Francisco at number four. I think that's a really good combo. Uh, so we'll look to do damage there. Or... I might change Rob Gaither for Omar Williams. Put him in a slot role. Let's do that. I think that's going to be really, really good. And then we'll switch uh, Rodriguez with Muller here. Because he's more of a wide receiver. They both have the same speed. I don't know. Keep tight end the way it is. Offensive line. We'll keep the way it is. Left end is going to be Deontay McKeon. Sandoval Slaughter at right end. Defensive tackle Daryl Bradford and Albert Johnson. Should be a really, really good combo. Colt Nash. Devin White, Jeff Fisher, I like that. And then at cornerback, Chris Chase as a Juco player, Chris Outlaw. Derek Higgins is going to go in for Outlaw. I think that's going to be just better for us based on the roles they play. Because Chris Chase is pretty good, right? His coverages were pretty good, yeah. Well, what makes him a higher overall? Pursuit. And tackling, maybe? Pursuit is really high. Is that the only difference in awareness, probably? 
What makes him such a high overall? Really high agility? I don't know. Free safety, Devin Robeson. Mike Lee at strong safety. It's a really, really fun team. Pete Riley. Kyle Day. Kick returner is going to be Kedrick Cunningham. I don't, I don't want it to be Hunter Register. He's just too slow. Roland Francisco will be number two. Even though the agility of Hunter Register is off the charts, Roland Francisco makes a lot more sense at number two. And then punt returner will be Kedrick Cunningham. So you guys are going to be seeing him one way or another. Should be a lot of fun. All right, here's our custom schedule. Marshall in week two. We will be looking to make some changes here. Eastern Michigan following them up in week three. Michigan State in week five. Six is Idaho, Iowa, ULM. Of course, these are all locked at the end of the year. I don't know how I like this schedule. All right, so the schedule has been finalized. Have three ranked teams on it. We're opening up with, against uh, UAB. Notre Dame, this is the big rematch here in week three. And then an open game before facing number 16, Oregon. The UNLV Rebels, University of Nevada, Las Vegas. The fake outlaws. Number 11, Tennessee. And, of course, then our uh, conference games. I almost want to say, ooh, we would have to reschedule something. Who would I reschedule here? I like the Notre Dame rematch aspect. Um, it would probably be Oregon. Is Georgia Tech on the schedule here? We're going to play Georgia Tech in a rivalry game. Play them again. So we have two games from last season, Notre Dame and Georgia Tech. Because I like the rivalry game being on there. We're going we're gonna to open up that week, though. And then um, we're going to put it in week 11. Can't do that. All right, we're gonna put it. We're gonna put it back where it was, in week four, or week five, week five. So I'm bit. I'm both mixed and not mixed about this. I know you want to see probably new matchups, but I love the Notre Dame rematch aspect, and it, I don't know if we're a, a rival of anybody else. Can I check? I might. I might check. I don't really know how it would check. Okay, so the way it works, I found out is when you import your team builder team, the team you replace is the one where you get the rivals from. So we took over Georgia State. The only rival for Georgia State is Georgia Tech. So I am absolutely gonna leave them on the schedule. That's just what it's gonna be. We are the rival of Georgia Tech now. So we need to have that game. Maybe it shouldn't be Notre Dame. I, I like the rivalry aspect of the of the back-to-back Big rematch game. I don't know. I'm going to keep it on. Is there any team other than Notre Dame? I'm sure like so many people, like some people want to see Wisconsin, others Washington. I'm sure others would want to see Penn State, Oklahoma, Ohio State. We've played Oklahoma already. I want to leave Notre Dame on here. I do. Go back in there, try to recreate the magic, do it again. This time they're ranked even higher. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do that. This is the schedule. I like how the number one player in this recruiting class already doesn't want to come to Ozark State no matter what because of his uh, deal breaker. What is his deal breaker? Um, could it be could be any one of these things, honestly. <laughs> Positions where we absolutely need to get better, in my opinion, safety. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably watch a lot of these guys. See how good they are. Cornerback, I'm kind of fine on. This is the top 100 only. We'll check pipeline next. Middle linebacker is another big one. So I did some scouting on some of these players. Of course, you get 1,000 points at the start. And uh, some of these players, not 100% scouted, obviously. But it gives us a good idea of uh, where we are on some of these guys. I wish I knew more. Um, but of course, I can only work with the points I have. There is one player that was particularly exciting, and that is an outside linebacker who is a gem, Randall Elliott, plus six overall gem, three-star outside linebacker, and he looks very, very solid. High finesse move, but decent speed, acceleration, tackling, play rec, good zone coverage and man coverage. Looks like a solid player, definitely someone I want to try and bring into Ozark State. This is an incredible three-star player, so could be a player we want to get, or it's a player we do want to get. Could be a player we... We managed to get. 
But now we'll be going to the regular season. I am super excited for season three. This is as good of a team as we've had, obviously. I think we were a 70 overall on the nose last year. I think now we're going to be up near a 75 at least. Probably the best team in the Sun Belt. Anything but a conference championship is a failure this year, in my opinion. I know we've never even qualified for a bowl before. Anything other than the conference championship is a failure this season. That's where I stand. We have eight preseason all-conference players. Where can I check who they are? That interests me a lot. Preseason polls. Uh, yeah, we didn't make the cut, I, I can tell you. See, Notre Dame is a 99 overall. That'll be a tough one. Looks like they got better. Tennessee, also a 99 overall. That's good. That's great. Is Tennessee still on the schedule? I don't remember. Ozark State, ranked at 103 right now. We are a 79 overall. 81 offense, 80 defense. That seems like it should be higher than 79, no? <laughs> There's Georgia Tech. They're up to a 90. Heisman watch. You got to put Colby Spencer on this list. These same two clowns are back. A fullback's on here from New Mexico State. Or New Mexico. The Lo Lo Lobos. A fullback. Preseason All-Americans. It's not going to be all NCAA. We're going to be all conference, I can tell you. So let's go ahead and move to the Sun Belt. Colby Spencer, obviously. Scott Lewis. Rob Gaither. Hell yeah. Jake Rodriguez. Daryl Bradford, he was so good last year. Jeff Fisher. And that's it on the first team. Second team, Roland Francisco and Chris Outlaw. Our four-year outlook right now is not great. We're currently at 103, projected to get maybe to 40 by 2018. We're going to need to pick up the pace here a little bit. I'm going to use my points right now in week one just for scouting. We have a bye week, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure out how good these players actually are. But I will update you guys on recruiting probably in one of the next couple of episodes. UAB is on the schedule next week, and that could be a good one. Apparently, it is an equally bad team at UAB. I would say there's no way UAB is better than us. Yeah, there is 75 overall. We're close to an 80. I say that, yeah, as good or as bad, whatever I said. Yeah, I knew we were going to be better. This team is sick. Well, it, it's okay, and, but, and it's ready to compete. Can't wait for this 2015 season to get underway. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoy the offseason, and I will catch you in the next one. Uh, take it easy.